Welcome in Dark Core. One huge asteroid could be enough to wipe out all dinosaurs that ever roamed the Earth, leaving behind nothing but a huge crater. Yeah, we're in the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico. And underneath there's Chicxulub, a massive crater. Now, if there's this immense hole, there must be a meteor, too, right? Well, weirdly, no one has ever seen the actual remnants of the space rock itself. It's a bit weird, especially considering how important it is. After all, many think the same meteor that created the crater is the one that wiped out dinosaurs. Now, it might have vaporized on impact, creating a massive explosion. Most of the meteor could have turned into gas or tiny fragments scattered across the atmosphere. Or it might still be here on Earth, you know, just hiding. And scientists have finally discovered where to look for it. But it's not easy to reach. Around 66 million years ago, a giant asteroid went down and marked the end of the Cretaceous period. It slammed into what's now called Mexico, just north of Central America. The explosion from the impact triggered a global heat wave, which was followed by years of winter. It threw Earth into total chaos. The consequences of this catastrophe led to the extinction of more than 60% of life on Earth, including all the non-avian dinosaurs like T-Rex and Triceratops. It also took down flying reptiles, pterosaurs, and sea creatures like mosasaurs. Long story short, it was the end of the dinosaurs' era. But don't be too sad about it because it paved the way for the rise of mammals and you and me. Anyway, scientists have recently figured out where the infamous asteroid came from and where it ended up. The thing wasn't just wandering around Earth's neighborhood. This massive rock might have formed beyond Jupiter and headed straight for our planet. But we'll talk about that a bit later. First, let's look more closely at the collision that created the Chicxulub crater. When the asteroid slammed into Earth, rocks from deep within the planet's crust were thrown up to 15 and a half miles into the sky. It also created mountains taller than the Himalayas around the crater's edge. The asteroid itself, called the Chicxulub Impactor, was about 6 to 9 m in diameter. It hit Earth at a speed of around 12 meters per second, coming in at a 60 degrees angle. I know we're not in a geometry class, but the angle is important here since it was exactly right to send the maximum amount of vaporized rock into the atmosphere. As a result, massive plumes of sulfur gases and fine dust shot up, blocking out the sun and causing what's known as an impact winter, which lasted about 15 years. At the time, dinosaurs reigned on Earth. They'd been around for nearly 200 million years before the catastrophe led to their disappearance. The meteor theory seems all plausible and all the facts add up. But even now, not everyone agrees with that. Some believe that dinosaurs were already on the brink of extinction before the asteroid impact, and the collision might have just sped up the process. Anyway, most dinosaurs were wiped out. But if scientists are right, then those who somehow managed to survive were the ancestors of modern-day birds. So, we have an idea of what might have happened, but it took years of studies. The crater was first identified by scientists working for PEMX, a Mexican oil company in the 1970s. And sometime later, scientists finally realized a mass extinction event that ended the Cretaceous period was because of the Chicxulub. One piece of evidence that pointed to the asteroid were the local fish back then. You see, when the asteroid struck, the immense force of the impact reshaped the planet's surface. For example, it turned rocks into glass-like spirals. Now, Spirals are like small spherical particles that can form from the rapid cooling of molten silica droplets. And some of these spirals ended up in the gills of fish that were wiped out by the impact. So, when during another research, scientists studied these fossils, it became obvious to them that the asteroid strike had happened during springtime in the northern hemisphere. They figured this out by studying the lines of growth in the fish's bones. Yep, those can be read just like tree rings. Of course, throughout many years, Researchers continued exploring the impact site, hoping to find new data about the catastrophe. Their best bet was to turn to the chemical record left behind by the asteroid, the debris of which is hiding under all those layers of rock and sediment under the Yucatan Peninsula. So they studied the chemical signatures in rocks from the end of the Cretaceous period and found that the asteroid came from beyond Jupiter. And it wasn't just any asteroid. No, it was a carbonaceous chondrite, one of the oldest types of asteroids in the solar system. It most likely formed billions of years ago. These types of asteroids only come from the region beyond Jupiter. So, the asteroid that caused the extinction event must have originated there. 
One of the main clues was ruinium. It's a rare element in Ose rocks, but much more common in asteroids. Scientists detected tiny amounts of ruinium in the rocks, which helped them confirm that the asteroid came from outer space, not from a comet or volcanic eruptions. In 2016, scientists also published the first results from a drilling expedition into the Chickix Lob Crater. The team managed to drill more than 4,000 feet beneath the seafloor, getting their hands on core sample containing pieces of the original granite bedrock that was struck by the asteroid. These rocks are deeply shocked and placed out of order on top of sedimentary layers. It supports the theory that the peak ring of the Chicxulub crater formed through a dynamic collapse process. Now, about that peak ring. Scientists specifically targeted it in their exploration. The so-called ring is a circular ridge inside the crater rim. Similar peak rings can be found in the largest impact craters in our solar system on the Moon, Mars, and Mercury. But on Earth, Chickixel is the only well-preserved crater with a peak ring. This discovery also aligns with recent findings from NASA's lunar mission. It showed that the peak rings within the Oriental Impact Basin on the Moon had formed in an equivalent way to those at Chickixel. The team is so eager to study the peak ring because they want to test their models of crater formation. Plus, they hope to find out whether this area could have been one of the first habitats for microbial life after the asteroid impact that wiped out dinosaurs. The peak ring formed just minutes after the impact. The deep granite bedrock, initially flowing like a liquid, rebounded into a central tower as tall as 6M before collapsing into the ridge we see today. This was followed by a layer of breccia. That's a jumble of rocks and impact melt. And after that, ocean tsunamis brought massive amounts of sandy sediment into the crater. Another find from 2016 was a 10-feet-long core, which revealed bits of granite and mineral from hot, fluid-filled cracks. That was a sign that they had finally entered the peak ring. Geoisthesis from the University of Texas explained that they had expected the peak ring to be a large hydrothermal system, and they were drilling to confirm this. The team eventually reached deeper layers. Drilling down to 4,380 feet, the team was able to collect most of the core samples they hoped to get, and the samples they got were in great shape. They also gathered lots of useful data from the early Paleocene period and completed a successful scan of the drill hole. Now, scientists from around the world will need some time to fully study and understand what these findings mean, but they're sure that this mission will help answer some big questions, like what exactly happened when the asteroid hit how it wiped out the dinosaurs, and how impacts like that affect life deep underground. That's it for today. So, hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the Dark Core. Thanks for watching Dark Core.